Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly Komala content. Both games and Pokemon games are pretty important. Once you finish the main story game, it is important to keep the players entertained for as long as possible. In this video, I'll make a tier list for the core Pokemon games based on how good their post games are. If you enjoy the content, like and subscribe, it goes a long way. Let's do this. Let's start with the D tier. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow come last. To be honest, it isn't surprising for the first game of the series. Of course you could try to complete the Pokédex, but it wasn't much either. The game really kinda stops after the champion battle, but again, it's the very first game. Then we have Pokemon X and Y. It's the other title in the D tier. Even though I praise these games quite a lot, their post games is MID. Yes, there is Killwood City with the Battle Maison and the Thren Safari, but it gets boring really quickly and the Lucas side story did not have much action to be honest. It's one of the only games where the Elite Four don't get stronger as well. Next, let's talk about the C tier, starting with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Honestly, it isn't bad but not exceptional either. You could compete in the Battle Tower and try to complete the contests. One word to describe this is okay. Pokemon Sword and Shield Initial Initially, without the DLC, Pokemon Sword and Shield have a rather disappointing post games. It's basically you chasing after these two numpies with horrible barbers <laughs> while helping gym leaders deal with Dynamax Pokemon. All of these leads you to getting your legendary and hops great character development. Pokemon Sun and Moon had the battle tree, a few smaller quests and of course the Ultra Beasts. The Ultra Beasts were rather fun and the battle tree is decent but I feel like there could have been more. Pokemon Black and White, the post games in these titles are pretty fair. You get access to a few new routes and cities. You have the Challenger's Cave, Black City and White Forest, Challenging Outdoor, the Seventh Sage, Symbiom. Yep, it's pretty fair to be honest. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the newest title to the franchise. Honestly, the post game is pretty average, maybe because of the upcoming DLC. So besides completing school, you have to battle the gym leaders and set up the academy tournament. Pretty similar to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Not bad. Now for the B tier, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green had something that made the Kanto post game more enjoyable, the Sebi Islands. This opened up much more in terms of exploration. It's always good to have post games that allow the player to travel more. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl had quite an enjoyable post game. With the access to the areas in the northeast, we now had access to the new Pokemon new routes and cities, the Stark Mountain saga and the Battle Tower, an overall good batch for the post game. Pokemon Emerald had one feature that made its post game very good in comparison to Ruby and Sapphire, the Battle Frontier with the addition of the Battle Dome, Battle Arena, Battle Factory, Battle Pike, Battle Palace, Battle Pyramid and of course the Battle Tower. You could spend so much time in the Battle Frontier, it was so much fun. We are now at the A tier. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire had all of their original post games content. It also had the Delta episode which was definitely great but the reason I put it in A tier above Emerald is because the secret bases were very fun, especially visiting other people's secret base and stealing their flags to get the platinum rank. I had so much fun with it. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, same post games as Pokemon Sun and Moon but with Rainbow Rocket, an amazing post game with a very unique concept and the return of the most notorious villains with quite intense battles. Bruh. Pokemon Platinum's post games was basically an upgrade to the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl one. More interactions and special battles including an opportunity to rematch gym leaders and important characters. The Battle Frontier got a major upgrade with the Battle Factory, Battle Arcade, Battle Castle and the Battle Hall added. Pokemon Black and White 2 allowed the player to access the places that were once part of the beginning of Pokemon Black and White, which is 
pretty unique. You also had the PWT, P2 Lab, the Legendary Arcs, Meadow, Pokestar Studios, the Natural Reserve, and more. These games had more than enough content to satisfy players for a very long time. Pokemon Legends Arceus had a very good post game that pretty much completed the story and gave you one of the hardest Pokemon battles in history. It also gave us a great plot twist. There are also a lot of quests in the game that allowed you to get entertained for very long. Pokemon Sword and Shield with the DLC, so the true post game of Sword and Shield which is hidden behind the paywall is extremely good. I would have put it in S tier if it wasn't, well, a DLC. There are numerous new things added with the DLC, especially new stories, characters, Dynamax adventures, new places to explore, and more. The list goes on and on. S tier, the final tier. We all know which titles are in there. Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and Pokemon Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Do I need to explain? Both opened up a whole new region and a final showdown with R Red, which is more than enough to be put in S tier. It was like a two games in one kind of thing. That's it for today. I did not include the Let's Go games and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because uh, I didn't really play them. <laughs> but this is really much my tier list for the post games. Do you agree with this? Comment down below. As always, if you want me to do more tier lists, let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.